And then, of course, uh, Mars, um, becoming a multi-planet species. Piece the hell of, out of being a single planet species. So, um, yeah, so we'd start off by sending a mission to, to Mars, where it would be obviously just landing on rocky ground or dusty ground. Um, and it's, it's the same approach that I mentioned before, which is you send the spaceship up to orbit, you retank it or refill it until it has full tanks, um, and um, it travels to Mars, lands on Mars. Um, for Mars, you will need local propellant production. But Mars has a CO2 atmosphere and plenty of water ice. That gives you CO2 and H2O, so you've got, you can make, therefore, CH4 and O2. Criticism for why, why are you using combustion in rockets and you have electric cars? You're like, well, there isn't some way to make an electric rocket. I wish there was. Um, but um, in the long term, you can use solar power to, to extract CO2 from the atmosphere, combine it with water, and produce uh, uh, fuel and oxygen for the rocket. So the same thing that we would do on Mars, uh, we could do on Earth uh, in the long term. Uh, but that, that's essentially what happens. Similar to, to, to the moon, you land, land on, on Mars, but the tricky thing with Mars is you, we do need to build a propellant depot uh, to uh, refill the tanks and return to Earth. Um, but because Mars has a lower gravity than Earth, you, can, you do not need a booster. So you can go all the way from the surface of Mars to the surface of Earth just using the ship. Um, albeit, you need to go for, to, to a max payload number of about 20 to 20 to 50 tons um, for the return journey to work. But it's a single stage, a single stage all the way back to Earth. Um, and I'll show you the, the, the so this is the, the true physics simulation. Um, this will last about a, a minute. Um, so you come in, you're entering very quickly, going seven and a half kilometers a second. Um, for Mars, there will be some ablation of the heat shield. So it's just like a sort of brake pad wearing away. Um, it, it is a multi-use heat shield, but unlike for Earth operations, um, it's coming in um, hot enough that you really do, you will see some wear of the heat shield. But because Mars has an atmosphere, albeit not a particularly dense one, you can remove almost all the energy uh, aerodynamically. Uh, and we've proven out supersonic retropropulsion many times with uh, with Falcon 9, so we feel very comfortable about that. Um, the, the, this is a, because it's sort of, um, you can see it's sort of a, a, a mesh system. It's not, it's not meant to be sort of particularly pretty because it's just trying to simulate the physics of it. Uh, but the, the size of the cone gives you a rough approximation for how much thrust the engines are producing. That's not a typo. <laughs> Although it is aspirational. <laughs> um, so we've, we've already started building the system. Um, the tooling uh, for the main tanks is, has been ordered. Uh, the facility is being built. We will start construction of the first ship. Um, around the second quarter of next year, so in about six to nine months, we should start building the first ship. I feel uh, fairly confident that we can complete the ship and be ready for a launch in about five years.